There's a lot of movies based on internet characters. This one happens to be another one. Oh boy, there's a crazy buddy cop action film out in theaters right now, Hobbs and Shaw, and what I hear is that it's part of this Fast and Furious franchise. Well, you know what that means. Time for a tie-in episode, where I look at where these movies began with the 2001 film, The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> what? This country reminds me of the time I was bitten by a rattlesnake. <clears throat> mm. So we're doing this gag again, huh? I, I heard they might ban women drivers, so I asked Bill to drive for me. But you said you hadn't driven much. But he has. He's driven lots. <laughs> oh my god! That's not the Fast and the Furious movie I thought it was gonna be! Fantastic. That was a waste of my time. Well, we gotta do something to tie into Hobbs and Shaw, so we may as well go to the original Hobbs and Shaw for our over-the-top buddy cop action. I didn't know, not Freebie and the Bean, the other original, it, it, Hickey and Boggs, no, the other original Hobbs and Shaw. There we go, the 1989 classic Tango and Cash. I say it's a classic because it's one of the rare posters that has the actor's name above the right actor. This is the timeless tale of Detective Gabriel Cash and Detective Egon Spengler. One wears our money suits and plays the stock market, and the other is really dirty. They don't get along too much, but then after being framed for murder, they gotta work together to electrocute the hell out of people! The behind-the-scenes production on Tango and Cash was almost as action-packed as the movie itself. The movie was hounded with problems from the very beginning. Originally, Cash was to be played by Patrick Swayze, and yeah, I can see that. After dropping out to do Roadhouse, he was replaced by Kurt Russell. While the film is credited to director Andrei Kochalovsky, Kochalovsky feuded with producer John Peters all throughout the film over the movie's tone, resulting in the director's firing, and at moments the film was directed by Albert Magnoli and executive producer Peter McDonald. The film's DP Barry Sonnenfeld was also fired during production, and due to a lawsuit with producers Peter Gruber and John Peters against Warner Brothers over the producer's replacements, the film's release date had to be sped up by many months for a Christmas 1989 release, despite the movie being filmed only a handful of months prior in the summer of 1989. So downside, sounds like it was a nightmare shoot. But upside, we got Tango and Cash, baby! Okay, let's do it. Um, and it's a musical? As the movie opens in License to Kill, we meet Raymond Tango. He's the Felix Unger of this universe, chasing down a drug truck, and dude, where are you going? That other truck is hauling unlicensed clear cola. He knows this truck is no good. It's driven by Robert Zadar. And the only way to take it down? Stand off with a semi-truck. Oh shit, man, this guy's crazy! He's shooting at us for trying to run him down! Maniac cops should have already proved that Robert really shouldn't be driving a big truck. <laughs> Tango didn't even need to pull out a gun. His force field would have stopped that truck anyway. As Lieutenant Jeffrey Lewis takes a break from his Harry Reams audition, he's here to congratulate Tango, or whatever his name is. I want your weapon, I want your ass. Who in the fuck do you think you are? He thinks he's Rambo. Um, is this movie screwing with me? What are they gonna call Cash, Jack Burton? Only one way to prove this is a drug truck, put a bullet in it. Great, now it's all over the highway and useless. Fortunately, the villain of the movie, Yves Perret, happens to be driving by. If it isn't Tango, it's Cash. Tango and Cash, Cash and Tango. Say this. 
Son of a bitch! Whoa, whoa, wait, James Hong? Is Cash also Jack Burton? I'm confused! Tango and Cash have the honor of being the only two cops in town, I guess. So much for them ever going undercover. That's what you get for publishing your address. After Cash poses for the poster, he's got to save himself some cans. And look, if that wasn't going to get hit by a truck, it was going to get hit by the bus from Speed. I miss 80s cop. Never mind your damn car. I got a bad guy to catch. Plus, 80s cop come with a random shot of nudity out of nowhere. <laughs> there we go. Just slam another car into the truck. You monster, my baby was in there. I did it from Perestroika. Welcome to America. Hmm, <laughs> timely. Anyway, that's Cash. He's the Oscar Madison of the group. And together, they make up... Uh, Turner and Hooch? Back at the precinct, they're gearing up for the sequel, Stop or My Sister Will Shoot, featuring Terry Hatcher. Well, a month or two is how long it takes to build a house, not take a vacation. A dance tour is not a vacation. So it's a dance movie now? Why is this in the Flashdance universe? Then she's off to do stunts for the latest Martika music video. Anyway, I figured I'd wait until I got to the station to take this off. That way I can show I'm a badass and show off my chest. Well, this seems like a safe place. Hey, who's been fucking with my gun? Scythe shifted on it. I don't know, but maybe stop pointing that thing around everywhere. Off to the bathroom slash interrogation room slash locker room. There we go. Oh, all right. Ugh, they should just talk things out. That would make for a more entertaining movie. Meanwhile, Tango is really just in this for the style and the action. I don't understand you. You make a shitload of money. You dress like a banker. What are you doing this for? Action. You're like a cobra, Tango. Your methods are over the top. Ha 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 Rocky IV! At the villain's lair, there's too much overacting in one scene. Jack Palance, Brian James, Johnny McCrazy-Eyed Henchman. Jack is stressed. His son, Ral Julia from The Rookie, is having a similar problem with Sheen and Eastwood. I didn't know I would have to say this, but then it gets weird. Two little mice. And so much damage. Uh, sir, was this really necessary? And where did you get those? Huh, well that was odd. So no one's gonna mention the mice thing, huh? And then, it keeps going. Tango. And Cash. Will be safely behind the bars. You could have just said all of that, but I'm so glad you didn't. Sir, that was a long way to go to tell us that your building has a rodent problem. So that's their plan, to frame Tango and Cash so they can continue to sell their drugs and weapons. I mean, they could just kill them, but why risk another semi-truck? At this staged bust, they meet with their contact, the musical score by Hans Faltermeyer. He did Axel F! And I just realized, we haven't seen Tango and Cash face to face yet. Well, Jack's problem kind of took care of itself. They find a dead federal officer who is wired. Clearly, Tango and Cash did it. There can be no other explanation. You're going down for this. No other suspects in mind. Get them on the bus to prison immediately. Captain Mr. Blue isn't going to help you out of this mess. Doctored audio, planted weapons, open and shut case. I'd say that there's no reason for me to believe that it isn't genuine. To be fair, Michael Jeter is just their accountant. He has no expertise in the audio. At least they're keeping it together. When this is over, we have to pay Jabba the Hutt here a visit. I'll bring the chainsaw. Nothing. Although they may be serial killers. They may not have killed the agent, but they definitely need to spend some time in jail. Don't worry, once this guy starts sweating, Arnold will be there to shoot him in the head. Uh, you know what it means if we go to jail, we'll definitely have to do a butt shot. They're offered a deal to do 18 months time. 18 months? For killing a federal agent? Um, you should probably take that deal. That's not that bad, actually. Pretty good deal, considering their lawyer, Mr. Littman, is a publisher, not an attorney. Tango gives a very respectable speech. Excellent! Now they can do just a little bit of time and then get their revenge. What say you, Cash? This whole thing... 
fucking sucks. I mean, this is the biggest part. Oh, he's just repeating what he overheard from the director arguing with the producer. Something about a giant spider at the end. Good work, gentlemen. With no more cops in the city, we can do what we want. Forgive me for asking, Mr. Perret, but uh, what happens in 18 months when they get out? Maybe we can cut a deal. Their plan is to kill them in prison. Sure, much easier to frame them, wait for the trial, wait for the verdict, then kill them in prison, than it would be to just kill them outside of prison. Unfortunately, they've accidentally been sent to a maximum security prison. What do you mean they're not there? They were on that bus. Listen, I'm already trying to trace them. They I don't understand this universe. Why won't anyone fix this error? We gotta come up with an escape plan to get out of this lockup, but not after the butt shot. Welcome to prison, boys. Take her for a spin. She's open for business. For God's sakes, just get to the love scene already. I'm pretty sure he almost blows him at one point. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But this is a sitcom prison. Well, you know they don't put cops in general population. <laughs> What's with the fire? Why is it raining trash? Who's in charge of this prison? Also, awkward. Yes, I love Joan Conan the Barbarian. <gasps> he was in Beastmaster 2. You're getting your Barbarian movies wrong, Tango. And biggest twist, of course Clint Howard is in this prison. Clint Howard is in about 50% of my episodes, and only about 1% of the time do I know he's in it before I watch it. Tango had an issue with a slinky once, but he straightened it. Naturally, the prisoners can just roam free and throw Tango and Cass through the laundry chute. Don't worry, guys. This is just a hazing. Once you get through the ceremony, you'll be part of the prison fraternity. Even the Dean is here. Just think of me as somebody who doesn't like you very much. Oh no, a film critic! How did you all get in here? Do you run this prison? Are you the governor? But this is an 80s action movie, which means it's a patriotic action movie. I don't want to get killed by this limey immigrant jerk-off! I want to get killed by an American! I think that's what's on Patriot Grandpa's tombstone. Just a few fight scenes to get out of the way, and then they can easily escape. <laughs> well, uh, there is that. I forgot this movie's fetish with electricity. <laughs> Ah, finally, the guards showed up for the night shift. There is no daytime shift. Let's easily get the hell out of here. If this creep wants us dead so bad, why doesn't he just put a bullet in our head and call it a day? I mean, what, what the hell's he gotta play this game for? No one knows. His demonstration with the mice didn't help at all. It just made things more confusing. But the assistant warden, who is friends with Cash, tells them that they need to escape. Or you could just make a call and let someone know that they're at the wrong prison. Tango has reservations about escaping, though, because it could be a setup. Plus, he's made a new friend. This is my fiance, Slinky. Up, Slinky. Let's see. Did Tango make Clint Howard his bitch? I don't know how more people don't escape. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Seems legit. Tango is nowhere around to say that if you get through the tunnel without being killed, you'll see daylight. Tango was right, though. It does turn out to be a setup by the crooked guards and inmates. That's funny. This doesn't look like the kind of place that would have crooked guards. What kind of maze is this? Tango, you son of a bitch! Let's get out of here before Jack Palance makes another demonstration. Somehow, this is all gonna lead to underground and escaping through the mud. I just have a feeling... No, but that'd be more realistic. This prison is like the underwater level of the Ninja Turtles NES game. Dear Christ, how is this prison not burned to the ground on its own yet? As long as you're only touching one wire, and you're not touching the ground, you don't get electrocuted. Right? Well, let's give this a shot, but not before Tango finishes his date with a soul taker. At this point, I'm surprised that that killed him for good. In this universe, I'd expect something like Shocker to happen. Unfortunately, with their ankles shattered, they didn't make it very far. 
Jack hears about the escape and wonders, Did we buy too many TVs? One would have been just fine. And maybe we should have just killed them instead of doing this stupid complex plan. That's not a problem that his mice can't solve. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, you're beautiful. I think this may be the only reason that Jack took this role. Oh, we're at Q Branch now. If Q ran a Chuck E. Cheese, what is going on here? Is this a gym? Are they making a dog bomb? And of course Michael J. Pollard is in charge of it all. I'm just here for guns, not shtick. Look, they haven't gotten the Puchinski prototype perfect yet, but when they do, it'll be gold. Now to hunt down the crooked FBI agents who set them up. This agent was paid to frame Tango in cash. It would have saved a lot of time if you interrogated this guy before the trial. <laughs> or you could have just put a car bomb on Tango or Cash's cars. And as for that corrupted audio recording, turns out it was made on a 1989 iPhone that plays inappropriate music. Lucky for me, this place is soundproof. Nice. What, am I watching Sesame Street now? Okay, Woody Allen, you'll be getting no slapstick comedy out of threading this machine when I'm done with you. Oh, right, Tango's sister. Anyway, on the set of One Night in Heaven, let's set up the meet cute with Catherine and Cash. This is a movie bound and determined to not just be an 80s movie, but the last 80s movie. <laughs> More on that later. So Cash has the hots for Tango's sister. <laughs> wow, Hobbs and Shaw really are fans of Tango and Cash. I know when I see a stripper, I also demand she play her own instruments. By the way, they're real and they're spectacular. Cops have surrounded the place, so there's only one way out. Comedy! <laughs> <laughs> Wait until the boys in prison see this! If only it was Patrick Swayze, we could have gotten that Tu Wong Fu prequel that the world demanded. If you're wondering where Tango is, he had the same idea, only to catch Rudger Hauer instead. Now they can get right to that sexual chemistry. Well, sliding off a high tension wire into a pine tree at 40 miles an hour tends to slip a disc or two. This is Tango and Cash, you're fine. Uh-oh, I smell a misunderstanding. Deeper. Oh my god, Gabe, I can feel it going in. Oh, are you? Oh, it's almost oh, in. God! It's all the way in! Why are you phrasing it like that? Why are you moaning? Are you having an orgasm? Uh, good thing you're here, Captain. I was about to murder my prison buddy. Break! Captain? Is this the way you screen all your guests? Mmm. No better than all this squabbling. I pay you! Yeah, and you're two weeks late. Well, if you would check your mail... Well, in Tango's defense, he has been in prison. I mean, he raises a good point. So they got the tape that clears their name and the address for Brian James at 1010 Villain Lane. Hmm, definitely 80s bad guy hideout. Overly sunny in the room, bad guy hiding around the corner. They're expecting you. Shame, shame. Don't you know ponytails are out this season? Never talk like that again! I saw something like this in Commando. Afterwards, we'll let him go, wink. You're being too obvious, Tango. James was given a bigger role in the film when Stallone really liked his performance. Maybe because he proved he can survive electricity. They play a game of good cop, crazy cop, where Tango wants to kill him. Though you're doing it all wrong, Cash has to be the crazy cop. He's the one who looks the most like Martin Riggs. But back at why the hell is there a Q branch, they are now armed with a redneck Batmobile. Isn't this the same guy that invented <laughs> your exploding bazooka boots? Hey. Oh, right. I forgot about the exploding bazooka boots. You're just now telling Tango about this? I think the criminals in this film do the least amount of damage. Okay, no distractions. We're going to kill some bad guys. Well, if you don't make it back, and I do... I am gonna date your sister. And we're gonna bang on your grave. Did Bruno Mattei take over directing this part of the movie? Quick, bust inside Drugland. Was this movie also made from an unused script to a Mega Force sequel? Jesus, this place was just waiting for a battle. And Jack should have seen this coming. This is literally the climax from Angel's Revenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
they'll be fine. Subtle, real subtle. What the hell are you going to drive? The most unrealistic thing about this movie is that the word subtle exists in it. And of course the bad guys had a monster truck just laying around. Why not? The only thing this is missing is a grizzly bear. It looks like if the finale of Grizzly 2 actually was finished and edited together. Only with more comparing penis sizes. Here! Oh, wait a minute! Why is yours bigger than mine? Genetics, peewee! Guys, guys, you both hang dong! Here's the problem, they made everything explosive. There was really no reason to arm all the drugs with C4. And there's a legal arms dealing, too. For Jack Palance is lord of all crime! Oh, and they kidnapped Tango's sister. Their only other choice was to kidnap his optometrist. Glasses or no glasses, they're gonna kill some bad guys. Hong place, Hong time, asshole! Well, this is pretty much all you need to know about the last act. Massive property destruction. I don't think that's footage of outdoors. I think the inside of the TVs are simply just on fire. On second thought, maybe we should have killed this guy on the roof. Kind of silly not to. As much as I love Jack Palance, Brian James' extended role really does make him the lead villain here. Looks like someone found themselves another number one guy. He fills all of the lead villain functions, including a big fight scene before his amazing death by crotch bomb. As for Jack... Ah! Well, he was killed by a different movie. But Brian's crotch bomb was from Batman Returns, of course. Then again, in this movie, Jack is also Scaramanga. Well, that was easy enough. Could have just stuck with a Batman clip. And just one more for the road. I love a great love story! Can't you both see that you're made for each other? <laughs> yeah! <clears throat> <clears throat> Gotta love any movie that literally ends with them saying to hell with what critics think. Boom! Tango and Cash! Oh yeah, well I'll tell you what I think. I don't much like this dumb movie, which is what I would have said in 1989. But nowadays, it's cool to like Tango and Cash. So I love it! This is pretty much the buddy cop movie you get from the director of Nutcracker 3D and the writer of Hell Knight and Nowhere to Run, plus with some script doctoring from Jeffrey Bohm of Lethal Weapons 2 and 3. Tango and Cash wasn't exactly a hit with critics, not that that ever would have mattered anyway, but it was a mild success, making back a little bit over its budget. Though in recent years it has gained some love for its unapologetically over-the-top action and dialogue, making it perfect to be the last 80s movie. Seriously, this was the last major studio release in 1989, and what better way to go out than with a movie completely going for broke and showing everything that audiences love about explosions, Big testosterone-filled balls, buddy cop banter, ridiculous set pieces, and the coke fuel glory of iron-pumping 80s action. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing. Personally, I like the fact that the French Connection does not contain an exploding dog bomb head. <laughs> or do I? Any uh, chance of a three-way?